Welcome to the Stoffel Systems Insights video series. I'm Eric Stoffel, President of Stoffel Systems. The topic of today's video is state of health as it's calculated by a battery management system. So what is the state of health of a battery? Well, state of health, or SOH, is most commonly defined as the total capacity of the battery pack today over the total beginning of life capacity, or what's called BOL capacity. And these are given in units of amp hours, or units of charge. So for example, the state of health describes the effect that you may have experienced when you have a cell phone that you purchased recently that seems to last all day and has excellent battery life. But after about a year or two, you'll notice that the amount of time that you can use your cell phone on a given battery charge is decreasing over time. So that would be explained by the state of health. So for example, when you initially purchase your cellular telephone with your, your battery, uh, it would have a state of health of 100% because you just got it and its total capacity is basically equal to the beginning of life capacity. But after say 300 or 600 charge discharge cycles, after about a year or two, you would see that perhaps it's gone down to 70, maybe even 60% state of health. And so it's very important to understand what this means because it gives you an understanding of how much time or how much energy you can discharge out of the system over time of a battery pack. So let's look at how this actually works in practice. So over here on the y-axis, I'm gonna describe capacity again in units of amp hours. And then in the x-axis, we're gonna use cycle life, or just battery cycles rather. So for example, say this is 100 cycles, charge discharge cycles. This is 200, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe up to 600 cycles in this particular system. Some battery packs have longer cycle life, other battery packs have less cycle life. But what do we mean by cycle life? Well. Over time, as you charge and discharge a battery, generally speaking, the capacity of that battery pack will decrease over time. So for example, when you initially purchased that battery pack and it had zero charge discharge cycles, this would have a capacity, say, of 50 amp hours. After maybe 200 charge discharge cycles, now maybe you see a capacity of 47 amp hours. And then maybe once you get to 600 cycles, you see a capacity of say 44 amp hours. So this forms a curve, a decreasing curve of the total amount of capacity that you can store in that battery pack on each cycle as you age the pack. And so that is the primary definition of state of health. However, there are a few other definitions or flavors of state of health that are very important to understand as well. So from now on, I'm gonna to refer to this state of health, what we just talked about, of state of health capacity. So this is the effect of capacity fade over time. But there's also another effect that can be calculated in an algorithm in a BMS that's very helpful as well. And I'm gonna to refer to that as state of health impedance. So what does impedance mean? Impedance is just a fancy way of saying resistance. So any sort of lithium ion battery cell or any cell in general can be modeled as a two, two device model. Basically here's your ideal lithium ion cell and then here's what's called ESR, the equivalent series resistance. And so typically for a cell this might be say 20 milliohms at the beginning of life at a certain temperature. So for example I'll say that this is 20 milliohms. Now over time as you charge and discharge that battery you will expect that this ESR, or equivalent series resistance, will increase over time. So I'm gonna to switch to a different color here, to red. And now in red, the y-axis is gonna to refer to impedance. And this is given in units of ohms, or milliohms, depending on the scale. So what you would expect to see is you would start with a relatively low impedance at the beginning of life. But as you charge and discharge the cell, your impedance will start to grow. And this is called impedance growth. So as 
you age the cell and use it, your impedance increases, so we'll call that impedance growth. So these two factors are very important to monitor within a BMS because it gives you an estimated understanding of how much capacity you have left to discharge at any given cycle in the cycle life of the system, as well as as you discharge it, are you going to have more voltage drop than before? Are you going to have more temperature rise than before? Because as you can imagine, as you charge or discharge the battery over an increasing resistance over time, you're going to have more thermal output for that specific battery system. So the battery in general will run, will run coolest at the beginning, and over time it will start to be more resistive and thus less efficient and generate more heat over discharges. So it's very important in the BMS modeling algorithms to be able to understand what this looks like as the battery pack ages. So going back to an important concept to think about when you're talking about SOH. So just to, in summary, this is SOH impedance and this is SOH capacity. So as you can imagine, if you're trying to come up with an estimated range remaining algorithm, for example, for an electric vehicle, and you want to say, so I'm going to say estimated range remaining, Okay, so how do we actually calculate that? Well, in a previous video, we discussed state of charge. So say for a simple approximation, we wanna say the state of charge of the system is 70% and the state of health capacity of the system is 80%. And when the vehicle was initially purchased, when the battery was brand new, we had a total BOL range of say 200 miles. So what is the total range of the vehicle now that it's aged due to the capacity fade effect? Well, if the SOH capacity is now 80%, then you have your current max range of the vehicle is now 160 miles. So not an insignificant difference. It's 40 miles reduction. So very important to know that. And then if you wanted to know range remaining, then you would need to take 70% multiplied by 160. And that gives you your range remaining. I'll uh, do the math later. Um, so it's very important to understand that if you didn't model your state of health capacity correctly, and you assumed that just your state of charge was going to give you an accurate range estimation, you would be off by potentially up to 40 miles of range delta. So it's very important to understand this, this feature. And then going to SOH impedance, why is that so important? Well, if you can imagine that the cooling performance of your vehicle is a limiting factor. For example, say that you have a, a race electric vehicle that's high performance and the battery thermals are one of the limiting factors that prevents you from uh, going to the end of the race with the maximum speed. Well now, you might have thermal, say that at the beginning of life you had thermal limiting that occurred, say that happened, say uh, 10 minutes into, into a race. That would be at the beginning of life. Now, assuming that you've gone through a few races, maybe you have 50 to 100 cycles under your belt, they were pretty high intensity cycles, which means that the battery degradation was worse than expected. So therefore your impedance growth, say, was about 50%. Then you potentially would have a situation where now your thermal limiting, instead of 10 minutes, is now after five minutes. So a pretty significant decrease in performance. So it's very important to understand and quantify these values so that when you are making estimations about the ability of your battery pack to perform over time, you're able to always give accurate estimations. So that's all for today's video. We'll see you next time. Thank you.